Hi, my name is Massimiliano Patacchiola from the University of Edinburgh, and in this video, I'm going to introduce our latest work that is self supervised relational reasoning for representation learning. First of all, I would like to define the problem. The idea here is to learn from unlabeled data and then transfer this knowledge to other tasks. In self supervised learning, this is done in three steps. First, we define a proxy task over the unlabeled dataset. This can be classification on a surrogate set of classes. And then we train a network called Backbone to solve this proxy task, and we learn useful representation on the way. And finally, we transfer this knowledge to those train tasks, like classification, segmentation, or image retrieval. A previous work had done this in different ways. You can, for instance, define pretext tasks, like solving jigsaw puzzles, predicting image rotation, or generating missing patches, and so on. Other way is to define a contrastive loss, and this is done in methods like Moco or Sinclair that have achieved the state of the art in such supervised learning. In pseudo labeling, we are going to generate uh, pseudo labels and then to perform a supervised classification on top of these labels. Uh, in InfoMax method, instead, we are going to uh, maximize the mutual information. And this helps in learning representations. This is done, for instance, by Deep InfoMax and MultiView InfoMax. In our case, we propose to use relational reasoning. And we define a surrogate binary classification task, and we use a relational head to discriminate between two sets of data. We have positive pairs that are generated by randomly sampling one image, generate two augmentations by, for instance, uh, crop size or random horizontal flip, and aggregate the pairs. And negative pairs that are uh, generated by randomly sampling two images perform augmentations on those images and then generate the pair from these images. After we have got the pairs, we apply an aggregation function that uh, is given by applying a function A on top of the pair. This can be sum, max, or concatenation. Then we have a relation head that is uh, used on top of the aggregated pairs. And in our case, this is a multilayer perceptron that generates prediction-wise. Finally, we have a loss function. The loss function takes as input the prediction y and uh, a label t. The label t will be zero for negative pairs and one for positive pairs. Uh, we impose a binary cross entropy loss that uh, optionally can have a focal factor, or uh, we can also use uh, regression losses like the mean squared error loss. The idea here is that by minimizing this loss, we are going to learn useful representation in the backbone. Here we see the full pipeline. On the left, we have the mini batch B, and we apply K augmentation on this mini batch. Then we are going to encode each image by using the backbone F. This produces the uh, Latin representation in Z. Then we use the aggregation function to generate positive and negative pairs. After this, we use the relation head. We take as input the positive and negative pairs, and then we produce uh, a prediction Y. We then uh, take the prediction y and the target t, and we uh, plug them inside the binary cross entropy loss. This is minimized with respect to the parameter of the relation head and the neural network backbone. Here we show an overview of the experiments. First of all, we have tried the standard linear evaluation procedure. This consists of uh, training on the unlabeled version of a data set and then fine tune just the very last linear layer of the backbone on the labeled version of the same data set. We have trying this on uh, CIFAR 10, CIFAR 100, TinyImageNet, and SLIImageNet using different backbones. Then we have also done a domain transfer task where you train on the labeled version of one data set, and then you uh, test with linear evaluation on the labeled version of another data set. This could be CIFAR 10 and uh, CIFAR 100, or vice versa. In green, we have test uh, the method with linear evaluation on CIFAR 120 by using the 20 superclasses of CIFAR 100. The idea here is to uh, check if the representation are uh, better for, uh, fine, um, for uh, coarse grain or uh, fine grain um, classifications. Finally, we have fine tuning. This is done on STL10. And in particular, we train the model on the labeled version of um, portion of STL10, and then we fine tune on the small amount of labeled data of STL10. 
As you can see, across all these tasks, our method has the highest accuracy. We have also tried using different backbones, like smaller backbones like COM4 ResNet 8, or larger backbones like ResNet 32 or ResNet 56. We also provide results with ablations. We have a show two types of ablation. Image A, we are going to remove the relation head. We are going to use a simple dot product between the representation and then impose a binary cross entropy loss. In the ablation B, instead, we are going to replace the binary head with um, an encoder uh, G that is going to encode the Latin representation in a, a Latin space. And then we are going to perform a dot product on top of this representation followed by binary cross entropy loss. In C, instead, we have our uh, entire pipeline with our uh, relation module and uh, that takes as input the uh, aggregated pairs and then minimize a binary cross entropy loss. As you can see from the table on the bottom, just with the uh, full pipeline, you achieve the best performances. And we can see that it's a drastic drop in performance with uh, both the ablations. This means that the relation head is fundamental and uh, without the relation head, we have a drastic drop in performances. Here we show experiments of qualitative comparison. What we do is we take the representations and we project them on a Cartesian plane by using Disney. This is done on CIFAR 10. With different color, we highlight the 10 different classes of CIFAR 10. We compare the supervised relational reasoning and rotation net. As you can see, if you compare relational reasoning uh, on the center with rotation net on the right, for relational reasoning, there is a better differentiation between the different cluster and different classes. We can then uh, also perform a different task, an image retrieval task. And we take each image in the test set and we retrieve the 10 uh, most similar images in the, the Latin representation space by using an Euclidean distance. As you can see here, we have the confusion matrix for uh, CIFAR 10. And on the main diagonal, we have darker uh, cells for our approach, meaning that we retrieve most of the time the right uh, class. If we compare the accuracy, we see that relational reasoning returned the right class 67% of the time, while rotation net just 47% of the time. We can also compare in a qualitative way the images that are uh, returned by the two methods. On the left, you see relational reasoning, on the right, rotation net. We compare, um, for instance, the first row, we see that in our case, for the query that is a red car, we retrieve most of the time the uh, red cars. While for rotation net, sometimes we retrieve uh, trucks or even boats. We can also check other uh, images. For instance, the row four, the uh, query is a boat. Uh, relational reasoning returns most of the time a boat, while rotation net sometimes uh, return uh, a boat, but most of the time returns uh, planes. So in conclusion, we have seen that um, the relational reasoning can be an effective method for uh, self-supervised learning. And this method is very easy to implement, flexible and robust. And the experiments show that uh, it outperforms recent state-of-the-art competitors on different benchmarks and with different backbones. The ablation have shown that the relation head is a fundamental component to achieve these top performances. In future work, we would like to focus on better understanding the training dynamics be, uh, behind relational reasoning and on uh, evaluating this method on uh, other settings, for instance, in uh, fully supervised settings. Uh, those are my contacts. If you have any question, you can uh, send me an email to this address. And thank you for your attention.